I'm going to go ahead and be honest. I don't think I'm too excited for the new Pierce the Veil record. Good afternoon or morning or evening, whatever time it is that you're seeing this. Hi, I'm Miles. I do music stuff. And one of the things that I like to do on this channel from time to time is talk about music that's being released by artists that I really enjoy. And we're going to be talking about Pierce the Veil because they literally just released a new single off their new record, The Jaws of Life. I believe the song is called Even When I'm Not With You. As someone who's been a fan of the band for a long time, I find myself in a weird position because I feel like of the three singles they've released off this new record, um, the last two have been probably the weakest I've heard from the band um, as, as a whole. And I say that as someone who wasn't the biggest fan of Flair. Um, I probably got roped into the band around the time they put out Selfish Machines. I think that was really the album that grabbed me and pulled me in. But musically, what I've heard from this record, while I appreciate the approach that's being taken, I feel like it's not producing results that are really something that's noteworthy. Obviously, the time between the last album and this one that's upcoming has been filled with its own trials and tribulations, whether it be Vic expecting his first child, which that in itself is a huge impact on your life just as a person, never mind creatively. You have so many thoughts that are just swirling through your mind and you're worried about all these different things and you want to make sure that everything is perfect as best as you can. So I understand that aspect of things. Then there's the aspect of the band finally getting rid of Mike on drums, considering all the stuff that's been wrapped around him for all these years as far as allegations and whatnot. I don't know the finer details of that stuff. So like if it's more than allegations, if there's been further steps forward with it, I don't know. So don't come after me for that. It's been nice to see Lionel playing drums for them, though. That's been cool. I'm glad to see him doing something with a band that I truly love. And from what I've heard so far, it seems like with this record, the approach overall has been sort of like, go back to basics, start with something simple. Don't make all the songs these big elaborate things because it's very hard to get the ball rolling in terms of writing something that is big and elaborate and has all these different moving parts. So... A lot of the lyrical content, the melodies, and the riffs in these songs are very simplistic and very basic. And as far as a song like Pass in Nirvana, it works really well. Everything that makes Pierce the Veil a great band shows out really well in that track. But then the band released a single, Emergency Contact, and I think as a whole... There's nothing really strong about the song. I think there's some lyrical moments that take place in the song that people can really grasp onto and say, yeah, I can relate to that. And that's cool. But the chorus of the song is weak. And I feel bad saying that as someone who has been a fan of the band for the number of years that I have been. I, as a songwriter, I know what it's like to feel the pressure of trying to basically recreate the success you've had from previous records but in a different format that's not just repackaging the same stuff and calling it new again but as far as choruses go the chorus in that song is a weak chorus i don't think it's very good and with this new single even when i'm not with you while i appreciate them taking this sort of typical pierce the veil sort of guitar riff and repurposing it in a different environment with this more sort of atmospheric surrounding i just feel like the song doesn't have something that's like capable of being grabbed onto as a listener i feel like it's just there and i know it's a bit of a weak critique overall but that's the thing there's like there's not a lot of substance to the song as a whole I think that if you were a listener listening to the song firsthand, not being someone coming into listening to it as a fan of the band already, you wouldn't remember the song. And in, in the way that society is constructed at this point in time, 
it's so important to have singles and to have things that are easily latched onto. But what I think really bothers me about the fact that these last two singles have been as weak as they've been is the fact that it kind of feeds into a trend that I've been seeing going on for some time now. And that's with artists putting out new records where they release half the record as singles. And while doing that, they're also putting out all these promos for these different vinyl variations of different colors and stuff like that different bundles and pre-orders and things of that nature and then when you get the record it turns out that there's like two three songs that are like decent on it and this is not strictly a critique of pierce the veil let me make that clear for example when panic at the disco put out the record pray for the wicked there were some variations on the vinyl, there was a pre-order, there was different shirt designs and stuff of that nature. And then when the record came out, and I know there's some people out there that are going to disagree with me, the record sucked. Even with a band like Muse, when they announced they were releasing their record, The Will of the People, their most recent record, they released a number of singles. And while they were releasing their singles, they were promoting these bundles they were having for sale different variations on vinyls and different ways to go ahead and purchase those and then when the record finally came out it turned out that the rest of the record was either duds or tracks that could be the equivalent to b-sides or demos and frankly if this is going to be the culture as far as the relationship between fans of artists and the artists themselves putting out product for the fans to buy i don't really like it it seems to me like if you're going to put out a record, I'd rather wait an additional amount of time for you to put out the best record you could possibly put out and have it be 10 tracks rather than you put out a record that is 12 tracks and there's like four on there that are really good. And then the rest I have to kind of like hear enough times that I finally get conditioned to liking it. And I'm weary that this is the case with this new Pierce the Veil record. I don't want to assume that's the case. I didn't even really want to say any of this stuff. But I felt like, rather than just sitting with these thoughts swirling around in my head, I'd put them out there and see what you guys thought. I imagine there's some fans of Pierce the Veil out there that watch my videos. So, please, feel free to respond to me in the comments. I'm not trying to throw shade. I still love Pierce the Veil. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm worried. <laughs> and I can say the same thing about Fall Out Boy because I saw they're releasing some new music soon and I know there's going to be a buttload of different bundles available for that. And already I'm apprehensive about investing in any of it. And to go back to Panic at the Disco for a moment, when Viva Las Vengeance was announced to be released soon and like singles were being released and whatnot the first single i was like this is great and then middle of a breakup came out and i was like i don't know i don't know let's see let's see what happens and then don't let the light go out came out and that track it's grown on me but initially i was like eh. And so, overall, I was apprehensive to even invest in a pre-order of any sort of bundle of any sort. And the drawback is, is that if you miss out on the initial pre-order of any of these bundles, as most of you know, there's a lot of limited runs of colors, of vinyl and stuff like that, that will no longer be available at the regular retail price after the fact. The only place you'll be able to get your hands on that sort of stuff will be in the secondhand market on like Discogs or wherever else. But yeah, I just feel like there's got to be a better way to do all this stuff, whether it be on the marketing side or on the creative side. Because like, I don't know, just don't think this is it. So yeah, that that's my thoughts. That's what I got for now. Um, part of me kind of hopes they don't release any more singles leading up to the record. I already pre-ordered the vinyl, so like I'm getting it already anyway. But I'm hoping that the rest of the record has a little bit more substance to it. You have no idea how many takes I've done of every single part of this video because I'm like, I'll say something and then I'm like, oh, that sounds terrible. So, you know, 
understand this is coming from a place of like a bit of pain because I don't want to assume that this record is going to be one of those records in an artist's discography that like we just don't talk about. But yeah, that's all I got for now. I'm not going to make this video super long. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and um, I'll see you next time. All right. Keep playing. Peace.